All right, so this here is Petey, and this guy with his back to the camera is Buck. Now, over in the corner, we have uh, Gunter, who had knee surgery. And so he's, uh, and he's a little bit uh, trepidatious, so he's kind of uh, keeping your distance sort of German Shepherd anyways. Now, um, one of the things we were talking about, one of the primary things that the Guardians want to do is they want their dogs to stop fence fighting. Fence fighting is when your dogs are behind a fence and on the other side of the fence, your neighbor's dogs are out and they're running up and down the fence on the opposite sides of the fence. They're upset with each other. They're usually a disagree. They're like, this is my territory. And the other dog's saying, I'm the same thing. Petey, off. Off. Good boy. So I correct, but I also reward when he does the thing that I want. So going off is a good thing. Again, positive reinforcement is, you can apply it to just about anything you do with your dog. So when I want to call a dog to come to me, well, first of all, uh, if we have a dog that is fence fighting, first thing we need to do is make sure we have a very strong recall for our dogs. Now, I like to use the word here for my dog because I work with dogs for a living and I want my dogs to respond while we're with other dogs because my dog's helping with work. So if the dogs, if I'm saying come and all the other dogs word is come, all these dogs come at once. Also something that's helpful is if you've been using the word come, which is the word that these guardians use, but they've been using it for a long time and they've said it hundreds of times where the dogs don't come. So we have programmed the dogs to ignore that command word. Can you see a little uh, buck in the, in the film? Buck, here, come here, sit, sit, I'll give you one, sit, I'll give you one. Sit. done a focus exercise with him. and there's other the dog is out in the yard that's why these dogs are going nuts now buck is a new dog to the house and so because of that he doesn't have the same reaction buck so i'm able to redirect him because he hasn't built up a habit of going out there come so what we want to do is uh the first thing we want to do is practice <laughs> practice teaching the dog to come in the house where it's easy. Now, as you can see, when we have another dog out, they're not going to pay any attention to it whatsoever. So if we practice in this scenario, we're putting the dog in a position to fail. So the first thing I do when I, keep, when I want to get a dog to come is I hold my hand like this, slightly cupped with my fingers so that I have it over the dog's nose so it can't see me I have a treat. So I say come. When the dog comes to me, I raise it over his head to put him in a sit, then I lower it, come. And I say come when he touches it with his lips. So let's try that again. Let's go over there, buddy. Come. Come. And then I reach under and I scratch and say the word come. Come. Now after a while, the dogs will start to associate this motion with coming. Now, when I do this, I hold my hand, like I'm holding it off to the side just for the angle so you can see. I want a 90 degree bend. I want my forearm parallel with the floor. A lot of people like start out like this or like this. I want to go up or down. So sit, sit, sit. So I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to show you. So if I hold it here, it's static. Now, I'm not saying the command, but sit. I'm not going to say the command word. I'm just going to show you how to use your a movement to entice the dog. Well, I guess I said too strong of a come or a mistake. So what I normally do is I say come one time. If the dog doesn't come, then what I do? I'm holding my arm at a at a 90 degree bend. Then I say. Now, for a dog, the lower it goes, the more it's for them. So I say it to a lot of people, like, lower it, and they're like, what I mean by lower it is go like this. Keep going down to the floor if you have to. See how he came over? Mm -hmm. Then I raise up over his head. Come. Now, I'm saying the word come here and not sit, even though he sat down, because come is a more challenging, and that's what we're trying to achieve in this one. Crash. So what I would have you do for this session, uh, for this exercise, is we need at least three people to do it. You can do it with two, but after a while the dog starts just going back and forth what I am being called. What we want to do is we want to form a triangle. And since you're going to Jamaica, I will hook you up Jamaica. Hmm. This is the command word for the dog that is now in Jamaica. 
So what I would do is start a triangle. So I'm here, the camera person's there, and I have one person there or one person here. So we're all about 10 feet apart. I would give each person about five to seven treats. And again, we're gonna, before we call the dog, we're gonna hold our hand like this. Then, then one person is in charge. They get a point at whoever's next. So they point at me, I would say, here. I would recommend you change it to here from come, because like I said, we've conditioned the dogs to ignore us. So we say here, one time. If the dogs don't come to me, then I make a kissing sound. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Sit. Um, the kissing sound is to get their attention. As soon as they look at you, then I start lowering my hand. So the kiss is not to get them to come, but just to look at you. And as soon as they do, you lower your hand. When they start coming to you, you raise your hand when they are in the position you want them to sit in. So don't raise your hand when they're a couple feet away. Then you have them sitting and you have to reach way over. The idea for this, that's going to be a good picture if I had my camera, is mm -hmm. occupied right now. Where were you guys a couple minutes ago? Mm -hmm. So if I use my hand motion to put them into that sit, that's an easy way to do it without the pushing that the guardians were using before. Now, after a while, the dog's just going to come and sit in front of you. You, don't have, you only raise your hand to put the dog into a sit if it doesn't do it on its own. Now, what a lot of people do is they just go vertical or they go like this. I work with MacGyver's ex-wife and she does it, she's like this. Almost looks like almost a Hail Hitler, which definitely don't want to eat So what I do is it's an arc. So if I'm here in front of the dog's nose, I go over their head. PB are blocking. Come here. PB down. There we go. So I go at, an, at a crescent shape to get that dog's head tracking. And as soon as they, their butt goes down, I lower it and say, come or what or here in this case, whatever the command word is. Now, if the dog starts to dance, gets up on its, on its hind legs, I bend at the elbow as my way of saying, no, that's not what I wanted. So, at first, you know, you have three, we have three dogs in this house. When you have three dogs, it can be very difficult to train three dogs simultaneously. Now, for the come, however, this is one of those rare exercises where if you use the right technique, having three dogs can be actually, or more than one can be helpful. So what I would do is pull out a high value treat, and this would be something you can do without doing with three dogs together or three people together. But maybe I just pull this out and I walk over there and I just go, come, excuse me, I would say here. Whoever comes to me and sits down first gets the treat. The other two dogs don't get a darn thing. Now, if two dogs come and start, reply, start consistently responding about the same timing, then I might go to two treats. When I get to the point where all three dogs are being consistent, then I give all three dogs a treat. But at first, only one dog's gonna come, the other two dogs are like, Pfft. I'll get my treat later. I'll just come up. No, there's no treat for second place and no, certainly no treat for third place. Now the dogs have a motivation to be first and they compete to be obedient. Now that's not going to solve the fence fighting problem, but this is going to help motivate them to come to us when we ask them to. So the first stage is just to do that. Now, if one dog is, let's say that Gunter is staying off to the side on his own, well, then what I might want to do is practice this while the other two dogs are in the backyard or in the basement or somewhere else and just practice with Gunter with the three people so that Gunter understands every time I come and sit in front of the human, I get a treat. Now, we want to start out with where, where we're, the triangle is about seven to ten feet apart. Then what we do is once the dog is consistently coming to every person consistently, then we're going to start increasing the, the size of the triangle or whatever the shape is. Now, if, the dog, if I call the dog to come to me, and the dog comes, and I give it, put it in a sit, give it the treat, and then the next person calls, and the dog's like, I'm not going over there, this guy's got more treats. What I would do is I would just cross my arms, and I'd look up like this, off to the side, and remain motionless. The more that I engage with the dog, the more that it's going to stay here. So if I just go like this and look away, I'm kind of shunning him, essentially, and he realizes that I'm not getting anything else from this guy. So, and then the other person would make the kissing sound. As soon as the dog looks at him, then he starts lowering the treat, as soon as the dog comes over, we raise it to put him in a sit and give it to him. Now, what we want to do is, like I said, start out with about seven feet apart. Then I would maybe have one person go sit on the steps over there. Then we practice that. So two people are in here, one person's further away. Then maybe one of the people in here goes over and sits at the kitchen table. So we're gradually going to make the, the triangle or whatever the shape is gradually bigger and bigger. Now, at first, we just want to go to the opposite sides of the room, but eventually we'd like to go into another room. So the dog has to come and find us beyond our line, its line of sight. And since we have a upstairs, eventually we want to go upstairs, downstairs. So the dog, well, I see a baby gate, so maybe dogs are not allowed upstairs. But we want to basically uh, get the dog's condition to come to us. And every time they do, they get a treat. So while you're doing this training, every single time they come to you, they need to get that treat at the end. Now, when I give the treat, remember, when the treat touches the lips, they should hear the command words simultaneously. 
And not here boy, here Gunter, just here. And no adjectives, no superlatives. Uh, once you've gotten to the point where the dogs will consistently come to you anytime you say here in the house, then I, what I would do is go outside with one dog and invite one or you know a neighbor or a family member or somebody else who so you have three, and we're going to shrink it down to where we're about seven to ten feet apart in a triangle. Put the dog in the middle, and we do this without the neighbor's dogs. There's no dogs. There's no construction. There's no distractions, and we want to condition that dog to come to us consistently. And don't just go boom, 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 boom. Don't, vary it up so the dog never knows who's who's calling him next. And if the dog comes to you and you didn't ask for it and just wait and let the other person call them. Once the dog's coming consistently, then we're gonna do the same thing we did inside. We're gonna gradually start taking a step or two away, step or two away, till eventually we're on the perimeter, uh, on the uh, edge of the yard on the fence. Now, when I do this, I would give each person about seven to 10 treats, and the training session should be, each training sprint should be like one to three minutes maximum. Always, always, always end on a positive. We want the dog to have a positive recollection of this. Now, one last little thing when it comes to training your dog to come inside. Most of us, the only time we call our dogs to come to the door when they're in the backyard is because we, we're calling them inside. So the dogs, that represents the end of playtime. Well, I'd rather keep on playing, so I'm just going to ignore you. You can't catch me. I'm too far away. So what I would have you do, if your dogs won't come to the screen door, take like a couple of treats out there, walk about five feet past the screen door into your yard, and say, come, or here in this case. As soon as one of the dogs comes, here, put them in sit, here, and then let them go back to play. And so this is helpful, like if you're, if it's a spring day and you're doing some gardening work, maybe you just have a, a pocket full of treats, the dogs are out farting around, pull out one treat, say here, they come over, whoever's first gets that treat, and then we, they get to continue to play. Now for this one, to chain them to come to the door, I would again walk about five feet past the door, ask them to come, put them in a sit, give them the treat, then let them go back to play, come back inside. Then go out again this time. Maybe the first day of five, I do it five feet, uh, five steps outside the door every time. Second day, maybe I'm four feet, four steps out the door. Next day, three, next day, two. Eventually, they come all the way to the door. I put them in a sit and let them have it. Once I'm at the door, then I would maybe open the door. And when they come to me, I might turn. If the doorway is right here, I might turn and toss the treat right inside on the floor. Let them go get it. Say the word come or inside or whatever the command word you want for if you want to create a specific command word to go inside. And then you let the dog go back outside. So again, it still doesn't represent the end of playtime. So eventually, if you do this right, you can come, you go to the door and say, inside, the dog runs over the door and comes inside, expecting you to treat, waiting for them inside. Once they're inside, we can close the door and control access to the outside. So um, this, is a this is something that's gonna take a lot of practice in the house, then in the house at greater distances, then outside, without any other dogs. And eventually we want to get to the point where we can do it outside with all three dogs and they're all coming consistently. Um, and then we're going to practice them coming to the door. So this way we have a situation where they can come to us and they're rewarded for doing so. Now the last little thing about fence fighting. Uh, are we friends with the neighbors who have the dogs that we bark at? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So what I would do if you can enlist their, uh, their help, because I'm looking at the backyard and unless I can't see, it's not a privacy fence, it's just a chain link fence. So I can see through it, right? The wrought iron, yeah. Okay, wrought iron. So basically what I would do is have them bring one of their dogs out, stand just on their porch with that dog on a leash, just one dog. And you're out there with your one dog and your dog can see the other dog, runs over to it, but the other dog can't bark, well it can bark, but it can't run around the fence. Here. Um, and so we practice having our dog come, even though it can see the other dog out there. But because the other dog's not so intense, it's not running around, it's not too close, it's not really animated, it's easier for your dog to come to you. So again, we have to shape that behavior and practice it and practice and practice it. And then eventually we can do that when the neighbor can have that one dog out on the leash closer in the yard. So maybe the neighbor, the neighbor's a halfway in the yard or a third of the way in the yard. And they're gonna gradually get closer and closer until we can have their dog be loose in their yard, one dog, and we call our one dog and it comes to us consistently. Now this is again gonna take some practice and a mm -hmm. lot of treats, but by using positive reinforcement, we give them a positive and a good incentive and motivation to come to us as opposed to running up and down the fence, fence fighting with the neighbor's dogs. This is a very long video on how we can teach our dogs to come.